Hey everybody, I got a video for today I've been waiting to do for a while. It is the Optimus Savea 123 cook stove. Hey everybody, thanks for joining me today. I want to show you the Optimus Savea 123 stove today. Um, it's a stove that I've been watching for years and I don't know, I guess I never really thought much about it and just never really had any interest in it until I realized that um, the stove that I had in my bag for uh, especially my ham radio response bag and my cert response bag was probably not going to work up at the altitudes we work at when we're up in the mountains and especially with the radio group that's probably where I'd be going since I have the only solar power backup so I'd probably be acting as a relay so I'd probably be up in the mountains very high possibly in the cold and I wanted a stove that reliably will light in the cold, in high altitude, all of that. Plus, it's a cool looking stove. <laughs> so, do you really need more of an excuse to get it? So the Savea uh, 123, it's a small liquid pressurized burning camp stove. There is no canister to it. You do not pump it up. It just builds up pressure on its own. It can trace its origins back to designs pioneered in the late 19th century. The stove was introduced back in 1955 by the Severtis, Severtis Company, Severtis Company, I hope I'm saying that right, and it was later acquired by Optimus in 1969, around 1969-1970. Uh, it's made of solid brass. It is not a light stove, although it is one of the first light backpacker type stoves. It's 19 ounces. Um, it measures 3 by 9 inches, 3.9 inches, by 5.1 inches. And it'll burn for about an hour on a full tank, which is about four ounces of fuel. Um, the tank itself will hold six ounces, but according to the directions, they say to fill it three quarters full. I'm going to go with four ounces. It's what's worked so far. You know, I've tested this extensively already. Um, and uh, I also have a filler backup kind of canister here that holds eight ounces. So this gives me two full refuels. Now, when it says it'll burn for an hour, let's face it, how long are you boiling water? Maybe seven minutes at the most, you know? So this will last you a good long time with some refills. If I'm going to be out longer, I can always toss one of the smaller Coleman uh, camp fuel canisters in there or fill something up bigger or take my MSR bottle, whatever. Um, this is what the fuel looks like. This will burn gasoline, however, they recommend against it, okay? You can buy this uh, Coleman camp fuel, Crown camp fuel, white gas, whatever, that's what it works best on, okay? It's kind of a similar principle to my little copper coil alcohol stove I made, gosh, two years ago now. You know, it raises the pressure in the tank, it draws up the fuel, and the fuel gets um, vaporized and the vapor sprays up. So, this is the R model, okay? The R model, inside the nozzle in this head here, let's pull this apart so I can show you. Inside the head here, you will see inside that cup, there's a little burner head in there, or a nozzle. That nozzle, when the key is turned fully the other way, and this is kind of important because I like to explain how the stove works because some people get confused about it. When you turn the stove fully this way, that needle will come up in the nozzle and clean it. Now, I don't think you can see that on camera. I can barely see it with my own eyes, but it's a tiny little needle that comes up in there. And then you put it down to close it. Now, some people, when they get this, they'll prime it correctly, and they get it going, and they're all excited, and like, all right, I'm going to turn it all the way up, and they put the needle up, and it puts the flame out, and they're like, my stove's broken. <laughs> it doesn't work that way. To get this on high, okay, this is off. If you want to get it on high, you kind of got to put it in the middle, okay, because you want it to be fully open, yet you don't want the engaging down here, the, uh, the gears to engage and push that needle back up, and it is gears down there that do it. So anyway, it's a pretty simple stove to use. Um, it's also a kind of cool, classic-looking stove, too. One of the uh, things I like about it is that it's all made of brass. I think that's kind of cool-looking. You put that out there with that little folding brass lantern I have, you got yourself a, a pretty neat-looking setup. Um, let's see. We're going to go into priming on this one, okay? Priming for this can be confusing for some people, although it's really, really simple. Um, now, what I like to do before I prime it is, if you notice here, there are ridges. See those ridges there? There's like an up ridge and then an over. And you have little indentations on the stove itself here. So what I like to do is line that up with that, okay? Now, before I prime it, I'm going to take this, 
because this is your control valve. I'm going to put it through there. Okay, and we're just going to set that to the side. That way, when it's ready to go and the priming has started, I just put this up. I put the little indentation through the hole there and twist, and I'm good. So, I didn't get it down. There we go, and I'm good. All right, so I'm going to put that to the side, and we're going to prime it. There we go. All right. I like to keep a little dripper bottle like this for the priming. Well, to prime this stove, you have to raise the pressure in the tank so the fuel vaporizers, vaporizes and goes up into the vaporizer and spews out. So they have a little indentation here in the tank that you fill up with some fuel. And I like to put a little up here too. And it will light up, so, you know, be ready. Don't, don't be freaked out. There we go, okay. You can see it's burning. So now that's going on, that's priming. We're going to take this up and put it on there like I showed you. So we don't have to mess around with the heat and the flames once it gets really, really hot. Now I don't believe I closed that all the way. See, I didn't. So we're going to let that build up because you want to prime it up good. If you turn it on too soon, you'll get that boom, boom, you know, and you don't want that. And we're going to try and boil two ounces of water, or two cups of water with it. I got my pan here. And that's almost ready. Let's see. Didn't really go nuts priming it, but we'll see if it uh, see if it works. There you go. Remember, you want it right in the middle. Now I'm going to give you a look at what that flame looks like. Turn off the lights here. Can you see it? All right. It is a loud stove. It's not quiet. All right, we're going to let that burn for a little. Move all this stuff out of the way here. I got two cups of water. And I'm going to place it on and start the stopwatch. And there we go. And I'll bring you back when it's boiling. We're about two minutes and 50 seconds in. We're starting to get some bubbles at the bottom. It's starting to bubble up. It's actually going a lot faster than I thought Just it would. crossed over the four minute mark and we have a rolling boil as you can see in there. So that's not bad for two cups of coffee. Or two cups of water. I'm thinking about the coffee I'm going to make in a minute. Now another thing. Keep this key out of that while it's working. Do not leave it in there. It'll get very very hot. Forgot to mention that. So now we're done. We're going to turn this off. And that's simple. That's it. Done. So you got about, well, I let it run, but I'd say about four minutes and 20 seconds, about four minutes and 20 seconds um, to get a rolling boil with two cups of water. Not a bad deal. You know, it's, uh, I think it's, I want to say 14,000 BTUs. So it's not going to be as hot as your ISO butane stoves, you know, those little, little thick little canisters, but it will work reliably in very high altitude situations. And, uh, it's just a cool stove. I, mean, I really like it. I like the, uh, the design of it itself. So for those of you looking for something for some uh, ultralight yet high altitude and cold weather capability, the Seveya 123 is definitely an option for you. They run anywhere from, I've seen them for $98 up to $112. You can buy the original uh, 123s. This is the 123R that has the cleaning needle. You can buy the original ones on eBay. They still sell them. They're around, I want to say, uh, probably you pay around uh, 150 bucks for them. Um, you know, if that's kind of what you're into and you're looking for that little extra, little extra thing, that's cool. You know, you can get them still. But if you can't and this is what you want, you're good to go here. Anyway, that's my review of it. We are going to take it outside. I do have a cook set coming for this, so we're going to do a full meal cooking video with it. Um, I just wanted to get this out there to show people what it looks like, and uh, we'll do a whole... Uh, outside cooking video to let you see how it works at a higher altitude. I'm at about 2,600 feet here in town. This town is kind of up in a mountain in a valley. So we'll do that in a little bit, but uh, I wanted to show you the stove in action inside here. Anyway, thanks for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, don't forget to check out our Amazon store. This is in my Amazon store if you want to pick one up. Um, but if you just click the link and do your regular shopping at Amazon, you don't have to buy what's in the store. 
We make a little bit of money off that. We can bring you more cool stuff like that. And uh, don't forget our Thrive Life uh, link down below. We have a ton of food there. And I have to get on. I have a video I have to do with the... Uh, the stuff I got in for last month, so uh, you'll be seeing that one soon. Anyway, thanks for joining me today, and I hope you have a great day. Thanks. Bye.